Smoke joining us. How you doing, my friend? Good morning. I'm doing well. How are you guys doing? Doing good. good. Doing good, yeah. Read an interesting article, and I thought it would be a good way to get going this morning, about the upcoming season and sort of the division of, of power balance within the league. Um, and they were saying that it, it, it'll be interesting to watch because like the Atlantic division with the Bruins getting rid of some veterans, losing some veterans, the yeah, Metropolitan retiring. division with Carlson going and playing with Sydney, the Central division, the Connor Bedard story obviously there, and then the Kings uh, shake up the roster with Pierre-Luc Dubois in that blockbuster trade as well. So it, it's... It's a lot of change, and to see how the chips will fall, there might be a little bit more equality in the league. Does that make any sense? Um, we'll see, right? Saying? Like, I always think about every summer, there's always player movement and guys move around, and sometimes the good teams just stay as the good teams. The ones that I'm most interested in is some of the ones who are kind of up and coming at the end of the year. Like, I, I look at a team like Arizona as an example. They're by no means going to be a powerhouse, but they could be a sleepy kind of playoff pick given mm. how they play in their tiny little arena, how they finished off last year, some of the young players that are going to be, uh, going into the lineup this season. So I'm going to be interested to see some of those like Columbus blue jackets are another one I'm interested to see, but in terms of like the powerhouse teams, I don't know that there's going to be a whole lot of difference, uh, even with all the players moving around. But again, what the hell do I know? That's the most important part. Of Columbus is going to be interesting because, uh, what's his name? Johnny hockey. Goudreau didn't like playing for, uh, Daryl Sutter in Calgary. Now he's got Mike Babcock coaching. Yeah. <laughs> <Columbus. laughs> Yeah, that should be no problem for Johnny Cougar. So I'm, uh, I imagine he's going to very much enjoy that. Uh, you tweeted it, Point and there's a story on Oilers Nation. Um, the Evan Bouchard deal looks like it's done, a bridge deal. We've been saying that for weeks. <laughs> yeah, it looks like for actually for real, for real this time, it looks like he is going to sign a two-year contract at $3.9 million, as reported by Elliot Friedman. So... Um, yeah, it looks like it's finally done, and now if that is the final numbers, what it comes out, Friedman doesn't generally post anything unless he's pretty sure. Um, all that's left to do is wait until October. Yeah, and we're 50 days away, I believe, from the start of the season, right? So, Yeah, so it's coming around the corner, and I'm just glad for Evan Bouchard. Like, It's yeah. going to be interesting. I'm going to go cruise around Twitter because this news just kind of happened uh, you know, 20 minutes ago or whatever. I'm going to cruise around Twitter and see how either a happy people are or b annoyed people are with the number that's always one of my favorite yeah. parts when it anything happens with the edmonton Oilers. so i'm looking forward to reading about the argument yeah shane o'brien who is he <laughs> uh shane o'brien is a former nhler that now is doing a podcast okay and uh apparently doesn't like ryan smith <laughs> what <laughs> all right did you see that one <laughs> No, I didn't see he, that, but like, he went, of all the... <laughs> Sorry, go ahead, Grant. He went viral because he was telling a story about how much he hates Smitty because when they were playing against each other, Smitty thought he was Wayne Gretzky and <laughs> he t took a goal away from some player at one point and, yeah. <laughs> Tucked his jersey right. in like Wayner. It was <laughs> weird. I, I kept looking at him going, you look familiar. You look familiar. Why? 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 And then I Googled his <laughs> name and I'm like, okay, all right. How does anybody dislike Ryan Smith? Yeah, like, like, yeah. Of all the players to dislike, that one's a that one's an a, interesting one to me. That but, is a weird you know. one. <laughs> yeah, if you get him in it, you'll have to. Go. I think the name of their podcast is Missing Curfew. Missing Curfew, and and I'm guessing it's probably still up. Anyway, he, it was. It's only about a minute long. He just tears into uh, Smitty. It just doesn't make any yeah, sense. Yeah, it made no sense at all. No, it's uh, so it was random. It went viral too. there, but a week ago. Um, yeah. the the Skinner conversation. Is it too early to start talking about? Our goaltending, it tends to be a popular never. discussion with the bag milk segment on, <laughs> on the It's never too early to talk about goaltending. I like, um, his, to, I like, like I, his theory that he's going to be better this year. Yeah, I mean, well, I I always find it funny when guys say that, right? Like, what's he going to say? Like, <laughs> well, ah, you know what? I'm going to be worse than last year, I think. <laughs> That's the target. That's but I point. think the interesting thing with the goaltending, this is right now, as of today, it should be, should be 
Stuart Skinner's net to lose and Jack Campbell's going to have to steal it back from him. So I think that's going to be an interesting dynamic, whereas last year was completely reversed. So what I want to see is how Stu kind of handles the quote unquote pressure of being the starter and knowing he's the starter going into the year and having Jack kind of try and regain his form and battle yeah. back and steal some of those games away. So that's the most interesting angle to me. Um, but again, we'll see how Jay Woodcroft actually plays his goalies um, when the season actually starts. Early in the year last year, there was a uh, he was riding Campbell a lot. The struggles were happening, and then eventually just flipped over to Skinner. So I'm wondering how much leash Skinner is going to get, how many opportunities Jack Campbell is going to get to kind of prove that he's bouncing back in year two of that five-year deal. The goaltending in Edmonton is going to be a very interesting topic, especially if either one of those guys struggles kind of in the early going. Well, also... Two, if you're being paid a certain amount of money, there's that expectation that oh, yeah. you're the number one. And I, I believe there is some difference in the Skinner deal and the Jack Campbell deal, right? Oh, like, yeah. Like, there's a significant difference. Yeah. Jack Campbell's, um, you know, he's making more money by a sizable margin. So, yeah, you're 100% right that when you make that kind of smoke, you would be, you know, the expected starter. But... Again, we'll see what happens. It's it's funny though. Sometimes these storylines have an impact, right? and mm-hmm. and not only that, the the type of situation that you put players in can have an impact, right? I I think that Jack needed to be sat for a bit, like for the type of player he is. Like in Arizona, you brought up Arizona. I think it's interesting. I think it's going to be interesting to watch as well because they're going to have a a bit of a bug up their butts because yep. because people make fun of them playing in front of 5000 people and they yep. might be a, you know they might make some noise this year because of that and I think that's what we had last year it'd be interesting though to see like you said if they give Skinner the 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 go ahead anyway that's what I'm looking forward to seeing like sometimes having really high expectations on a player or a team can you know negatively impact their performance on the ice but yeah. when the reverse is also true you know this year, I don't think people are expecting a whole lot from Jack Campbell based on the way the last season went. So, and that might be hopefully better. That for puts him. him in a good spot to bounce back. Yeah, and yeah. you're right, Locke. Maybe, hopefully, that is a good spot for him to be in this year. Oilers Nation Golf Tournament sold out, so you're out of luck there. But you guys released the Nation Vacation, the latest one. So this is the second one you've released, right? Uh, this is the first one of the year. We are going to be doing two. So we are we just launched our trip to Seattle. That one's coming up November 10th to 12th. We're going to a hockey game on the Saturday night. We're going to an NFL football game on the Sunday morning. Nice. Oh, wow. Um, and then we're coming back on the Monday. So you don't actually even have to take, because that's the long weekend. You don't actually have to take a day off work for this one. So if you want to check out the details for that, it's nationgear.ca. It's going to be a blast. I cannot wait. We've never been to Seattle before. We've never done an NFL game as a crew before. So there's going to be a lot of lot of good times on this one. I'm very, very excited. So go check that out, nationgear.ca, if you're interested in coming along. What I love about your enthusiasm around this trip is that you won't need a day off when you get back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, need and take are two different things. Right. This one. Like it, for me personally, I could tell you I'm not going into the office on that Tuesday. <laughs> but if you have a grown up adult job, it's just something to think about, you know? There he is. Bag Milk, Oilers Nation. Thank you for your time as always. Thanks, boys. The locker room for Arden Roof Systems. Weekday mornings on 957 Cruise FM.